Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Fortress Finest, a spinoff of our regular Fortress Love podcast, where this time around, we are covering The Last of Us, the HBO show, episode six, Kin. Um, there's no spoiler. There's no non-spoiler section here, listeners. So it's spoilers from here on out. We're going to dive into it, but there will be obviously a future spoiler section that is later on when Devin is not here because we don't want to spoil this show for him or any future events. So look out for that and check all the time codes for anything like that. But yeah, let's begin. I will say I loved so much of this episode. I pretty much only have one major flaw, and it's the last four minutes I feel were a bit <laughs> rushed. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. On a, upon a second viewing, I will say it was better, but on first initial viewing, I was like, this could have been even four minutes longer. <laughs> and, that, <laughs> and I think that would have been all necessary. <laughs> yeah, I, I really liked this episode as well. Like, I, It made you feel things. The show makes you feel things. Not always good things. This, this episode, uh, maybe good things, kind of. I mean, kind of a little sad things, but... Yeah, Joel, Joel felt very old this episode. You kind of feel in his age. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I mean, just like, you know, some of the conversations it seems really, really hit, hit home. So I thought it was pretty good. Nice to have some peace. Yeah. Well, that's true. For, for most of it. Uh, and right. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about some of that too, about the, the peace and how that feels for some of these characters. Um, yeah, I, I think it's funny that you say Joel feels fucking old in this one because he, he definitely does. <laughs> and it's so funny because me and Oscar talk a little bit about that um, in the game. Uh, Joel's, you know, your video game character, you're the main character, so you're definitely a superhero. So it's kind of really funny seeing him in in the light as just some guy. He's just an old man. Yeah, he's he's just an old man that happens to have got lucky enough to not die yet. Uh, So it's been interesting to see that. Uh, I feel pretty similar the way you guys do. I do think there was more that was a little bit rushed than just the last four minutes. Um, There's a couple of parts here that I know uh, differ from the game that I feel like didn't get enough time to bake. Mm-hmm. That makes feel weird with me a little bit. So I know we're we'll talking right. about that a little bit. But yeah, I think it's a good episode. I am worried about the way some of the stuff landed in this episode as I've been over the past few episodes. There's so many important points in this game that have to hit appropriately. Um, so far, they've done a great job. This one, I'm feeling less confident about. And that worries me for what they might do in the future. But we'll talk about right. that. Right. Before we get into I do have one. I have just have a, a complaint. <laughs> not with with any of us or anything, but with everything else I've, of other like shows or people that are talking about the show. I'm so sick of people saying that these people voice these characters because obviously they did voice them, but they also played them in a big square box with ping pong ball seats on. All right. They played mm. these characters. They didn't just voice them. They played these characters. It'd be like saying that Zoe Saldana voiced Neytiri in Avatar. Right. No, she was in water holding her breath for five minutes playing these characters, you know? I said nitpick. I just had to clear that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get to see Henry fucking blow his brains out again. That was a great way to start this cool. broken episode. And that was Jesus. funny because we talked about how that felt more appropriate to hit that black screen than go straight to that three months later. And they were like, well, bet we heard your we heard your qualms. There <laughs> it is. is. <laughs> yeah, they just yep. did that quick cut in there for, for yeah. this week. Yeah. I do wish they had still shown uh, Ellie's face before they did the black screen. Because uh, right. that also hurts a lot more to see her just in pure pain. Ugh, yeah. Especially Belly's, Bella's fucking reaction is so good in that moment. Yeah. But yeah. But no, that was that was a start it. <laughs> yeah. Three months later, snow is winter. I really like this old couple in the cabin. <laughs> I really like them a lot. I fucks with them heavy. This two indigenous <laughs> people just being like, yeah, we've been living here for fucking ever. Uh, mm-hmm. Fuck y'all idiots. Y'all don't know nothing about what's going on. I love that where he's like, yeah, I we lived here before you were born to Joel. And it's like, oh, they just they secluded them. I also like their banter where she's like, I didn't want to move. <laughs> but we moved anyways. That's between that and it's like, you fed them soup. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> they didn't hurt me. I have eyes. Right. <laughs> Shout out to them who is played by Graham Greene and Elaine Miles. The two of them. Phenomenal. I've seen I've seen him around a lot. He's a char- He's a big character. Mm-hmm. I've seen him on a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, I thought the two of them were great and I love how, um, Joel will still hold a person up, but he, he's softened a bit in the sense he's not just going to murder them. He needs their info and he, to, to find Tommy. Um, and he, I got a lot of bill energy from, from him, from, from the old man where he was talking to Ellie. He's like, who's this little psycho? <laughs> what the hell's going on? <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you think that he had to hold them up? I don't. I still didn't really get that. I feel like he kind of like no. just had a conversation with them. They probably were like, "Yeah, what's up, bro? Yeah, we got you down the street." 
<laughs> yeah, old habits die hard, I guess. For Joel. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty much their whole sequence. I, the only thing I would say is like, I I would love to have seen more of this couple. Yeah, like they're I thought they thought mm-hmm. they were really really good. You know. Yeah, that's true. Um, and obviously they get all the info of best way to go west is to go east. Don't cross <laughs> death death river. <laughs> also, Ellie's a little thief. I saw she stole that route. I was like, damn, Ellie, what the fuck? You stealing from these old people, bro? <laughs> What are they going to do? Beat That's her so up? so mean. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the biggest takeaway, obviously, from the scene, I think, is we see Joel have his first panic attack, uh, a mm-hmm. theme that will continue in this episode quite frequently. <laughs> Which that that's going to hit me weird. Uh-huh. The, the panic attack thing has gotten kind of popular in media right now because I think one person has figured out how to make it look appropriate to how people do feel when they have panic attacks as someone that has had panic attacks before in my own life. Um, now they were like, we're going to drill that shit into the fucking ground. Um, <laughs> it's no secret that Joel definitely has PTSD and has not right. settled with it. There's no therapist in the apocalypse, apparently. Um, so it makes sense for him to kind of have panic attacks, but it also doesn't. I don't know. It just feels a little tropey, a little in, in a show that's already part of so many different. Like the thing about Last of Us is how it differs from what we know about zombie apocalypse media. This show seems to hit more of the things that The Last of Us originally differed from. And mm. doing the, the panic attack thing, I feel like it's a little cheap. Um, it gives me the same feeling. It's like if you did like a flashback and it'd be like Tess being like, take her to the to Wyoming. You know what I mean? Like some shit like that where it's like, OK, like right. we didn't need that yeah. to know that this man's struggling. I think we already have enough right. as it is. This is a little bit beating it in the sand. Um, right. That was just my no, opinion that's fair. in regards to that. That I just I've seen it a lot, and I've noticed it. Puss in Boots, the the most recent Puss in Boots movie, they also have a panic attack. What? Yeah, they have a panic attack in that. Puss in Boots actually has a panic attack in that movie. Um, oh my and it, goodness! It very much feels the same as this, and I'm glad they're treating it appropriately and making it look like what it actually feels like to have one. But maybe we right. need to calm down on that trip for a little bit. That's fair. I mean, obviously, this goes into a big theme that's not in the game. Is that this? Without spoiling anything, not, it's not really a spoiler. This version of Joel in the show is a lot weaker of a man physically, in the sense that I was worried where you're going deaf. with that. <laughs> he's a little pussy. I'm like, oh, <laughs> 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 no. Nah, I mean, in the sense that, and we'll talk about this later. He's half deaf. He's mm-hmm. older. He's slower. Like, very different interpretation, and right. in a sense, a more realistic yeah. than the video game for obvious reasons. L- but... Literally, in the normal version of the game, where you're not playing on like a harder mode, you have super hearing. <laughs> the complete yeah. oh, opposite. You... <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's true. You have Batman detective mode in, in the game. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I mean, it makes sense in what they're establishing with this version of Joel, um, which we'll talk about more. But but yeah, so that happens, um, and then we get a little montage of them camping um, and just kind of bonding more. And I really enjoyed all this. I think the two of them for the most part, are nailing that they have gotten closer in these past three months. Mm-hmm. Specifically, I mean, I, b- both of them, but obviously Bella, because she's more vocal than, than Joel is in, in most of the scenes. But, um, like, I love the conversation of, of what are you going to do afterwards? And Joel still being the, the asshole that he is, he's like, what do you mean we? He's <laughs> like, after this, I'm done with you. <laughs> and he said, you're going to raise some sheep. Mm-hmm. You're going to be a, a little sheep farmer, man. Oh, God. <laughs> And uh, Ellie talks about wanting to go to space, which, I mean, you're not, you're not supposed to crush a kid's dream, but girl, you ain't never going to space. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that hurt my feelings. We can't even get, like, medicine around right now. You think you're going to build a rocket ship? <laughs> hey, Fedra has a secret base. They're going to send her up they to They have Mars. a bunker. <laughs> get, get, just get people off the earth. That's yeah. Good. And you're the moment where uh, Joel, again, being weak and old, Dude falls asleep on the job. What the hell? That's some pure dad energy, though. Like, I'm up, yeah. I'm up. And he fucking falls asleep instantly on the couch. I think he even has arms crossed. Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> that old man's sleep, bro. It hit different. <laughs> oh, so funny. I, I literally threw my and I was like, did Joel just fall asleep? I was like, wait, what the fuck? He's so old, man. He's such an old man. He's supposed <laughs> He's to be so, so hardened and stuff. Like, he... He's so old. <laughs> uh, but you get a good moment where it's like, no, Ellie, she's learned from Joel. She's taken watch. She's learned how to take care of things when he's not necessarily not around, but when he's obviously asleep. And she, she's trying to prove that she can handle herself, which I like. I like all that stuff. And then, again, we'll talk more about this later. I think their banter is just so well done. It's well written mm-hmm. and it's well done between the two of them. Like, 
this is from the game. Ellie tries to whistle. Like, that's mm-hmm. pulled straight from the game, and I loved it. <laughs> you get to the dam, which, I I mean, I love Ellie's line when they go there. She just goes, damn. <laughs> <laughs> like, such a stupid child joke. But it was just like, <laughs> delivered from her was so good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and obviously, like, this is a not, this is, this is, we can mention, this is a video game comparison, Devin, um, in the sense that this entire episode in the game takes place at this dam. You never go to Jackson in the video game yeah. like this. And, and all of the Tommy stuff that we'll get into all happens at this dam, um, which is interesting. And quick little behind the scenes is that um, Neil Druckmann mentioned that they initially had concept art of Jackson and wanted people, to, players to go there in the first game. They just, budgetary reasons, couldn't do it. So it all ended up taking yeah. place at the dam instead. I mean, it's mm. it's not unrealistic to understand that this game did come out in 2013. It was the last game to come out on PlayStation 3. Yeah. There's a lot of limitations that you were probably dealing with when it came mm-hmm. to the scale of this game. And I can definitely understand that being one of them. Like, yeah, they've talked about what how nice it looked all the time, but we weren't going to see that shit. Uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, That's cool. Yeah. And then they get surrounded by a, uh, how they didn't hear. I mean, I guess we know Joel can't hear as well, but how Ellie didn't hear like a million horses galloping <laughs> like <laughs> inches behind them. <laughs> Yeah, not very subtle. A TV show shit. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But just, man, how lucky that even though Ellie's infected, the dog can't sense it on her. How (laughs) fucking lucky are they? My goodness. My first thing I said was like, damn, that dog is not very good at his job, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Damn, that dog sucks. I thought for sure he was going to smell it on her, but. You know what? That'd be a hell of a bluff, though. If the the whole time the dog actually doesn't do anything, they just decide whether or not like yeah, eat that person. That, that's <laughs> what I figured. That's what I figured. Yeah, that was just a bluff the whole time, and the dog didn't do shit. That's a good just bluff. Some dog. <laughs> that is a good bluff. Yeah. I also like to think there is a dog at the in the damn section of the game named Buckley. I'm a, I'm just gonna say that this is Buckley. So this shout is Buckley. Out to Buckley the dog. <laughs> he made the cut. He made the cut. <laughs> <laughs> he was the voice actor of Buckley in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then we get to Jackson. We get to yes. see all of Jackson. Republican utopia. Everybody has a gun and a horse and a cowboy Thriving. Hat. And Thriving. Are... <laughs> Thriving communists. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Calling the communists was funny as shit. <laughs> I forgot until that moment that uh, Tommy was a vet. <laughs> and so the moment when, to- when Tommy's like, no, no, we're not, we're not communist. No, we're not, not. It's like Tommy. No, we, we're communists. We're living in a commune. <laughs> this is literally a commune. I was like, it's been 20 years, Tommy. You're not a, it, like, relax. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> the word's not scary yeah. anymore, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Jackson's incredible. I do, I, I love, because we barely talk about Pedro in this entire show as far as acting goes, because so many of these side guest characters are just so fucking good. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think all that shit, Pedro was in this episode, is like, you know I'm on the fucking poster. I'm going to act in this bitch, all right? I'm going to show you what acting is in this bitch. And I think one of the best scenes is when he finds Tommy. When he Mm -hmm. sees Tommy and he just, that guttural scream of his name and then that hug was fantastic. I thought the the two of them did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. And just uh, him saying like, what are you doing here? I came here to save you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I mean, I guess that brings you to another good point of that brings up the like Joel and how he feels about the whole situation is like in his mind he thought his brother was in trouble and he comes here yeah. and they're watching fucking movies with popcorn and <laughs> he feels some type of way about it because yeah this man's been eating yeah. fucking nasty ass old peaches out of a you know mm-hmm. eating some ravioli <laughs> out of a yeah. can and this man's out here eating whole ass meals so he's just kind of like huh he's got a you're, sick you're trouble, jean jacket huh? and he Walks around and does a lot of cool looking stuff. fresh as hell, that younger shit, than ever. That should look laundered. He looks younger than he did before all this shit happened. Canadian <laughs> cowboy, looking good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then obviously they get to they get to eat some lunch with God damn it, Ellie, stop biting your damn fork, girl. I swear, Bella. I thought about you. I when swear, I saw that. they were both feral in that in that scene. They were both eating lunch like feral animals. Like that. God damn, so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one thing that. Caught me by surprise, obviously, just because in the game, she white. Uh, Maria's black in this iteration, which I thought was pretty cool. Played by, what's her name? Retina Wesley, who Brian had to make me familiar that she's in True Blood. Yeah, Oscar (laughs) would know her from True Blood when I watched True Blood as Tara. Yeah. That was always yelling at Sookie. Uh, Love to see her (laughs) in something else. That's really great to see her somewhere else. Playing a completely different character that is much calmer than Tara is in True Blood. So that's (laughs) 
Yeah, I thought she I thought she was great. I thought I I believe their dynamic. I love that that whole kind of tense scene on the at, at lunch where she says like a bad reputation or Tommy says a bad reputation doesn't mean you're bad and she looks at Joel and says not always at least. And clearly she got she got some beef with Joel there, you know? Like there's some not great feelings from I'm assuming things that Tommy has told her about what they've done in the past. Which I do kind of wish they explored a little bit more because in the game there's a little bit more overt um that she doesn't like uh the, the joel tommy situation especially based on like what he wants tommy to do towards the, the oh end of this episode. right yeah um, so she very much voices her distaste in this situation um uh, it was a little bit more covert in the way her feelings went but it's like it was one of those mm-hmm. things i was like man i kind of wish she just like went out and just straight said it to his face be like listen i know what the mm-hmm. fuck you about bro we got a good thing right. going here can you not fuck that right, up like right. <laughs> they also didn't have yeah. a scene with her and tommy like when tommy was gonna take Ellie. like they just didn't have a scene of them talking as a couple and i thought that for sure they, that, that they would but mm-hmm. surprisingly i mean in the game there is a very short sequence which brian was kind of alluding to where he's like it just cuts to her, tommy agreeing and she yelling at tommy saying like i you're not gonna do this no fuck that yeah. and then he's like i gotta do this and she goes to joel and she's like if anything that happens to him it's on you and that's it maria i will say Maria has a little, a lot more to do in this show, in this episode, than she does in the game. <laughs> For sure. But it still hits me a little differently. Because I feel like it's another yeah. one of those situations where I feel like Maria, you can definitely tell Maria was wearing the pants in the video game. Um, whereas this one, right. Tommy says that she does, but it still feels like she doesn't. I don't know how to convey hmm. that better. I, I, read it, I read it that she's wearing the pants. <laughs> really? Yeah, same, yeah, it, same it, here. It didn't yeah. hit that the same way for me because she was a little bit more quieter in the way that she spoke and the way that she presented information, I guess, to like Ellie, uh, to Joel, to Tommy. So I was kind of like, mm, I don't know. To me, she came off uh, as more like the guy, I guess, is Kang on the brain. Is that <laughs> she's got that quietness to her mm-hmm. because if you piss her off, she will go off on you. I can see that. Like she... Yeah will kick the shit out of you type. That's the kind of energy I felt like That's from fair. her. So yeah. 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 For me, she just had that kind of quiet assurance of of like her mm-hmm. authority. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. Unlike Kathleen wouldn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> she was just she was just all aggression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. And they take a little more of a tour of Jackson. You can see the biggest fucking Christmas tree in the background that I've ever seen. My God. Mm-hmm. How did they decorate it up there? That's good Lord. Uh and a sheep. I, again, Ellie being a fucking child, she goes, "Hey Joel, look, bah. <laughs> It's so dumb. I mean, she's it's hitting so it so dumb. well though, because that's such she an is. Ellie thing to say. Like that's such a. It's so good. Ellie's so fucking annoying in the game, but in like a <laughs> in an a, a, a adoring way, where it's like it's cute, but it's like, yeah. god damn, she's such a fucking kid, and she's a charmer. Bella's she's a charmer. hitting it well with doing the same kind of stuff. Yeah, she's doing a really good job. And uh, obviously, they, they, this is the same as the game. Maria and Ellie go off to do their own thing, and Joel and Tommy go to talk. Fucking Joel's like, holy shit, I got to drink at a bar? I haven't done this in 20 years, <laughs> yeah, dope, man. Bro. <laughs> they live in the life. <laughs> a clean bar. Talking about having alcohol and bacon. That's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Republican utopia. You just give them those two things and guns, and they're fine. You were not wrong. <laughs> bacon. I got my bacon, my whiskey, my AR-15. I'm happy. <laughs> Bring on them zombies. And this is where we get the first big Tommy Joel scene, which I thought was fantastic in the sense that they basically talk about, yeah, we murder people. I, I, I really like the way they've written Tommy in the sense that he even says, like, I don't, I don't judge you for that. Like, he has no ill will towards Joel about those things that they did. They did it to survive. But Tommy, like he says, realizes, there were other ways to do it. We just weren't good at it. Right. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> we, Which I totally believe. Yeah. You know, we're contractors. <laughs> we're the contractors. We, mm-hmm. we, we do what we gotta yeah. do because that's what we know how to do. Exactly. Yeah, and I love that. And then you get the big, and this is a big difference of the game in the sense that Tommy tells Joel he's gonna be a dad. No. That is a big, huge difference than the game. Maria does not ever say that she's pregnant at one point. Um, and I, you can just feel and see just the energy drain. Whatever energy was left in Joel at that moment is just sapped out of him, dude. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, oh, that's rough. Because like we talked about <laughs> earlier, like to, to think that your brother's in trouble and to find out that he's doing so well, and then to know how not well you've been doing for so long, really, that hurts. And he's going to be a dad now, something that 
you lost. Yeah, that was taken away from me. Like, yeah, that fucking hurts, and I can understand mm-hmm. the 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 reaction to that. Uh, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he's like, doesn't mean you know, just because life stopped for you doesn't mean it has to stop for me. It's like, ooh, yeah, that one hit. <laughs> It's rough, but he, I mean, at the, at the same sense, he's not wrong. But with, mm-hmm. but but again, this goes credit to Tommy as a character. He apologizes later. Tommy is the bigger man out of these two brothers. For sure, he is mm-hmm. the he's the bigger man. I mean, he he gets to be the bigger man. He he's had someone to give him, you know, the talks to tell him to calm down and stuff like that. Whereas Tess, on the other hand, with Joel, kind of talked him up a lot more to be like, "Yo, we, we <laughs> I, I unleash you on the bad people that we see." And like, yeah, Tess definitely did want him to calm down. Like, you know, the whole Bill situation. Um, we saw that in the right, earlier right. episodes of her being like, you can, we can like these people and be okay and not be. But I think that Tommy just had a lot more room to grow. He was allowed to. Because uh, he, yeah. he was in a place that had grass. Where, you know, Joel <laughs> wasn't. <like. laughs> mm-hmm. And I think that that goes into something that we'll talk about in just a second, which I love w- with the Maria character we'll talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, then Joel gets pissed, storms off, and then he has another panic attack in which he sees the back of a woman who looks just like Sarah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she got the same hair. She got that Nico Parker hair. <laughs> Which, how the fuck? Who, who's taking care of your hair? You don't got no hair products to have your hair look like that. <laughs> That's true. You got to be in the fucking kinky, curly section of Walmart <laughs> to get hair care like that. That's true. And this one worked in the sense that she he's not only seeing a woman that resembles his daughter. He's seeing a woman who has a child of her own. It's like he's seeing what could have been at that point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like if, if none of this had happened, that could be my daughter with her own child. I could be a grandpa, blah, 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 blah. And so that one kind of, that one got me in a sense. I was like, oh, damn, he is, this man is so broken <laughs> inside. <laughs> it's, ugh. And then we get to see more of Ellie Maria. This is something obviously because the game is all perspective of Joel. You don't get to see any of this, which is one of the additions I really liked in this show is get to see what Ellie does with Maria and goes out. Um, and talks to her. Obviously, shows tackling a lot of menstruation is things. <laughs> I love that she gives her a diva cup because, like, <laughs> at, uh, uh, Craig Mason mentioned this in the podcast. Is like most of these apocalyptic shows, like, like they never think about. This I was thing. wondering. I was like, are they just free bleeding? <laughs> is this just- yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I kind of love that they bring it up, and also I just love Ellie's again. Bella's killing it with these reactions to it. Where at first she's like, oh, gross, and then she like squeezes it together, and she just lets out, lets out this tiny little. <laughs> like the tiniest <laughs> little chuckle. <laughs> and it's funny because I swear this is what everyone does with those cups because you have to fold it a certain way and it has to pop out and that's how you're supposed to right. use it. But it's so funny because yeah. it sounds so scary to actually do that. So to watch her be like, heh. It's like, <laughs> that's exactly how anyone that would hold that would do exactly that. Like, so I yeah, thought that was a small little exactly. addition that was just like, okay, that works for me because I've definitely seen people do exactly that before. Right, yeah. Obviously, she gets her clothes from the game. Again, her cool little pink and white hoodie thing that she wears. That's straight from the game. And her purple as fuck coat. And her big, <laughs> ad, her, her, yeah, her big eggplant coat. <laughs> and this is the moment where I was talking about where there is a memorial in Tommy and Maria's house. Not only to Sarah, because you can see, well, obviously, it's Sarah because of her name, most likely. And then the dates, you, you can allude that it is Sarah, and they tell you it's Sarah later. But also another person named Kevin. And then you find out is Maria's child. And this is where I meant I meant that I love this mirroring of the two different ways, not not just these two, but two different ways that Joel could have went in the sense that if you look at the dates for Kevin, Maria lost her three-year-old child. Mm-hmm. Two days after Sarah died and the, the outbreak day, she lost her three-year-old child. And look what happened. She is thriving now she has continued her life she's she's pregnant again she's met someone and then you have the mirror to joel who just never continued his life mm-hmm. as tommy said you know what i mean and i just kind of love those two polaring things you know that's an interesting mm-hmm. way to put that because i'm sure they were trying to maybe tell that kind of parallel or that mirror or i hope they were because when i first saw that i was like this is a weird memorial to have <laughs> it's like <laughs> to my son and my niece uh, it was like, well, that was quite, quite the same. And it was like, because we know, like, a part between the game and this is this whole conversation happens because of a photo that Ellie sees. Um, and that's how she finds out, like, oh, who, who is this little girl? Like, oh, that's, you know, that's his daughter. And he's like, oh, shit. Um, but in this, you just see some names. And it's just like, that's not a memorial that I would have. Just some names with some dates. But, you know, go on. Right. But yeah, the, yeah. The parallel yeah. thing does feel a little bit better in my mind than what I initially thought. 
I mean, yeah, and then obviously Ellie finds out, and uh, that's where Maria kind of is able to be like, I don't trust Joel, and you shouldn't trust Joel either. <laughs> He's not a good person. <laughs> uh, which I mean, and thinking about it, not knowing him through this journey so far, she's not wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. it was no. the last time Joel did something good before this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, I think Joel knows that as well, which is why we get to the the, the next Joel Tommy scene where he's trying to pawn Ellie off because he realizes he's just a giant failure. <laughs> he's cut off of this shit. Oh, I did want to say one thing. Uh, Maria's uh, belly bump was uh, sticking out between them tight ass jeans. And I was like, girl, if you don't give that shit some air, Jesus <laughs> Christ. She definitely had like a bump at this point, but she definitely had some jeans that were working their ass off with that, that, that belt on, <laughs> that cowboy ass belt. But belt was hanging off a dear life. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that baby was struggling <laughs> up in that apartment. Fuck. She needs some joggers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, actually, real quick, before we get to Tommy and Joel again, they go to see a movie because, you know, this town's got fucking everything. Mm-hmm. There was a tiny part of me. I, it's a movie called The Good Guy Girl, a movie I never really heard of. Not the point. But there was a part of me that was like, man, I really wish that they were just playing Return of the King and, then, and there would have been like a side side dialogue that was like, yo, we found this in New Zealand and we got it. We got it now. Guys. <laughs> I'm bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> On repeat. On repeat. On repeat. I'm into it. Oh, I like man. it. Because we were watching as far as that movie. I don't think then kids were going to enjoy that movie that well. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you can't play them like oh, the man. second Matrix movie or something. That was out at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So obviously we get to Tol- Joel and Tommy again. And this is, this is the big uh, Joel scene. Joel fucking cries. He, mm-hmm. He's very vulnerable in this scene. In, in a scene that's you never really see in that first game at all. And in, in mm-hmm. seeing Joel be this vulnerable. Where he tells Tommy, yeah, I'm slow. I'm deaf. I'm weak. You know this better. You're younger. I need you to do this for me, please. And he says, it'll be the last thing I ever ask of you. I swear. Which me and Brian will talk about <laughs> later when Devin's done. <laughs> mm-hmm. Devin, I want to know what Devin thinks. I feel like we haven't been having Devin talk very much. What did you feel about this scene? Absolutely. I thought it was great. This and the following scene, I thought were fantastic. And, you know, it really made you feel something. It just really felt how frail and, and fragile that Joel's really feeling, you know, because he's like, he's getting too old for this shit. You know, it's like, I mean, he got through several near-death experiences and feeling the stress of it. So, you know, yeah, I, I, I loved it just kind of to see the breakdown of the character. Just like, let lo- like, you know, the tough guy, Joel, always so tough and, you know, uh, quiet and, and stoic. And then he just kind of lets it all loose. Mm-hmm. Which is his brother. It's his family. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm still on the fence with how I feel about it. Just based on, once again, knowing the... I mean, I'm on a fence with a lot of the stuff, but I know it's a very different character than what I know. Um, and I'm kind of at odds on yeah, whether or not it feels like it was an appropriate change or not. Because, I don't know, I, I love a good subtlety. Sometimes I think it is overreaching when just trying to make it too much of a one-dimensional character. But in this situation, I do... I don't know. Mm. I don't know if this would have been the point that I would have expected Joel to break down. Because he's such a stoic character, like you said. Right. Uh, and it just feels like it, it's it feels much more powerful to see him holding his feelings for so much longer and then break down and then break down like right here before the end of the story actually happens. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought when I was thinking about it because I got so upset about it. I mean, I see what you mean. Like, <laughs> like I guess because, yeah, like, I don't know. But I feel like in, the, in a video game, it, it would be tougher because, you know, main character energy. But, exactly. There's yeah. that main character syndrome as well, where it's like always he's going to be a superhero no matter right. what. But it's like it's one of those things where I feel like they've already shown enough to show that he's kind of struggling with it. That it's like that they need to have him fully break down and cry um, based on like the situation. Because I do right. kind of like the fact that you're always guessing of like, does he care about this girl? Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll continue right. to see how yeah, I feel yeah. with that. But that was just kind of one of my takeaways from it. It's also a thing where because in the video game in this section, this conversation gets cut mm-hmm. off prematurely. You don't get to see this whole conversation because in the game, Tyrell and Tom, you're having a conversation and then you get attacked by random people hunters they just show up at the dam <laughs> blah 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 because it's a video game and so i kind of like that because they moved this conversation to jackson they were able to get right. creative and and finish this mm-hmm. conversation properly um and i i did end up enjoying the, mm-hmm. the the frailty of joel and and again tommy being the bigger of the two of them that's a yeah. big commitment for tommy to take on he said it's a what a week's ride uh, that, that, that's not nothing <laughs> a week's ride 
He's going to be a dad. Mm -hmm. Like anything could go wrong. Even though he's like, yeah, people come and go all the time. It's you'll usually right. be fine. Pretty low typically, risk. Pretty low you risk. do do you do what you do. But that's still well, like going anywhere. A is, big is, risk. You have a certain like, <laughs> minimum level of risk by just existing in this right. world. Right. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, again, I, I really enjoyed the, Tommy's character throughout the, all, this entire episode. Mm -hmm. I really dug all the Jackson stuff in this. And then you get potentially the biggest scene of the video game. And maybe, I don't know about this show. We'll talk about it. Uh, is Joel and Ellie. And Ellie already knows that she's, mm -hmm. he's going to he's gonna ditch her. And pretty much this scene is mm -hmm. verbatim from the game. Oh, man. <laughs> that was, yeah, it hit, it hit pretty hard, especially when she, cut, like, she knew it. And she's like, if you're just going to ditch me, ditch me, you know? And it's just, man, the, the, whole, it, the whole scene was just so good. Like, I loved <laughs> it. I shed a tear. I did. That's awesome. I'm so happy <laughs> to hear that because I will admit, I still think the video game version of this is better. I agree. I agree with that, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know quite why i think i don't know if it's because maybe i needed more time with them mm -hmm. to bond even though i believe that they're bonded and i believe it but obviously with the game at this point you're way you've you spent so many more hours with the two of them together right um and in this uh granted they say it's a three-month gap but we don't get to see that three-month gap of them bonding more mm -hmm. um and i believed it but there is a part of me that was like maybe and maybe i needed a little more to believe how much they love each other because i even joel even says like i do he, joel admits that he cares about her she straight up asks him and he does say yes which is was surprising to me he says yes it might be one of those things that where interactivity might make this a stronger feeling oh for exactly. sure um, where it's a for first sure. person aspect of it yeah. where it's like i know joel cares about her but because I've been playing alongside her, I care about her as the player yeah, of right. video games. Exactly. Um, and that's been my fear of a lot of the, the big moments in this game. It's like, I feel like a lot of my investment comes from the fact that I, I am doing these actions. I'm doing these things. I'm the reason these things have happened. Um, right. Which has been my fear from this whole TV show from the get-go. So I was afraid that's not going to hit as well because of that. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. that might have been one of the first parts that I feel like maybe it was like, oh, well, yeah, that didn't hit as much because of that. Like that investment doesn't feel as real because it's not yeah. it's not me you know right but it but, but again that's why we, i love having you here Devin. is it great to know that it did affect you yeah so it's still hitting oh, yeah. to that level yeah yeah that's awesome yeah. i'd love to hear that because again by the end of it i still thought that was a great scene even though oh yeah and again we shouldn't be comparing them but it's just it's so difficult personally for me not to because it's impossible because it's, it's the so same yeah. if they did something where this was a different part of the universe this would have been and that was one of the reasons why i felt the way about this show it was a different part of the universe i'd feel completely different but you're doing almost right. in some cases shot for shot what i've already seen right and that is a bold fucking move yeah. <laughs> exactly. to do for a tv exactly. show it's, it's still a great story yeah. though because i mean for me you know coming in and not play the game yeah. and I, I do agree with you i think that spending more time because by this point in the game you probably would have played i don't know 10 hours or something maybe more yeah but like just the, those go you know sneaking through a building with ellie and just those little bits of dialogue and stuff you are bonding with her it's the same way you do in like you know mass effect and other games where you yeah. you like the characters you like because you spend time with them so exactly. yeah definitely i could see how it'd be it would hit harder in the game but i think they did about as good of a job they could do in the show you yeah know, with it absolutely. especially because they kept the blocking and they, they as they said that you know it's basically verbatim out of the game i think that was a very smart decision to like you know you're not going to be able to touch it probably but you got to do to do to do something wildly different would have been would not have been the right call. I'm truly exactly. glad they recognized that some parts of that game were just I don't want to say perfectly done, but like just so well done that they didn't need to do anything else to it. Right? Because like you could easily just it. do just make changes for the sake of changes. So the fact that they understood right. where they needed to and where they didn't, I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, and Joel's like, all right, we're come dawn. We are going our separate ways. That's it. Which, speaking of dawn. I'm pretty sure it wasn't dawn when Tommy goes to find Ellie. That shit looked like midday. <laughs> the bro. sun was well over that mountain. That was yeah. hella <laughs> two p.m. right there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "This is yeah. midday, guys. What? <laughs> yeah. What kind of dawn are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, and so I, I, I definitely thought in that moment Ellie was hoping that knock on the door was going to be Joel, and then mm -hmm. when it's Tommy, there's a bit of disappointment in her there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's like, all right, Tommy, we're going to the stables. We go there, and who? Oh, look who we find <laughs> waiting here for <laughs> us. <laughs> it's your boy, old man Joel. <laughs> old man Joel saddling a horse for thirty minutes, which I, I imagine it's. I mean, 
He was twiddling his thumbs for 30 minutes. Oh, He's just waiting for that. Yeah, does he know horses? I mean, yeah, he seemed I mean, to take from on them Texas. pretty quick. <laughs> probably. From Texas. Uh, he probably knows horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Joel had a bunch of flashbacks to Sarah, and obviously, clearly, something happened internally where he just decided he, he wants to go. Even though, and this is something me and Brian will talk about later, he gives Ellie a choice here to say, hey, um, you can go with me or Tommy before he even finishes that fucking sentence. At least like, let's go. <laughs> I'm going with you. Let's do this. Which I loved. I love that. And Tommy's like, hey, this is great. <laughs> I don't have to risk yeah, my Tommy's life. like, perfect. <laughs> I don't gotta go. Yes. <laughs> it's like, thank God. And I was I was happy for Tommy because I'm like, man, this man is just gonna die. If he goes out, if he goes with them, he's gonna die. <laughs> if he goes with Ellie, he's gonna die. Ah, just, Devin is learning. He's you know, <laughs> like, please, I don't need any more emotional damage from this show. Just like let this man have a nice <laughs> life with his wife and Jackson. And let's also not have Jackson attacked by infected or anything else. Let's just have one nice thing. That doesn't get broken. Which, yeah, I think this is officially the first episode with absolutely zero infected in it. Thank God. I believe. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank God. <laughs> and it was beautiful. It was great. And then again, we get another, we get another little montage uh, with Joel and Ellie traveling. They say goodbye to Tommy, obviously, and they're going to the University of Eastern Colorado, which is not, in fact, a real university. I was about to say, I was like, I've never heard of that before in my life. It's not real. <laughs> it's made up in the game. But I love, like, they obviously had a chance to tur turn it into a real place in this show. But they're like, nah, fuck it. Keep the fake video game university in there. Like, what the mm. fuck oh, is so Eastern good. Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get, like, a little moment of Joel teaching Ellie how to shoot, which, mm -hmm. Brian, I don't think Devin was here when me and Brian talked about it. But this is almost kind of what happens earlier way earlier in the game of a section where joel is teaching ellie how to shoot a gun but in a completely different context in this scene which i love but I also <laughs> 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 but i also love how how happy and smug joel is when he nails it mm -hmm. you know it's very much like any kind of like a, your dad dad type of thing where it's like you get to make your kid proud almost well, you can't like, do that <laughs> just watch and also because it's also like 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 nine out of ten times, Joel will miss that shot. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just so very lucky that he got it. He's like, yeah, I could do that every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I thought that was all a lot of good shit. Yeah, again, just the bonding stuff. Like Brian brought up the contractor conversation. Just so, so well done between the, the two of them. Where she makes him sound mm -hmm. like Batman. <laughs> he said everyone loves the contractors. <laughs> everyone loves contractors. He also had a moment, uh, he described late stage capitalism pretty well too. It's like some people wanted to own everything. Other people wanted everyone to own nothing. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. what, so did, what did you really believe? Work. He said, I just work. And I was like, okay. He just said, I'm not a Democrat <laughs> or a Republican. I'm just, yeah. I'm just here. Which yeah. very much like goes to his character of, yeah, he seemed like he just wanted to live his life and raise his daughter right. it seemed like his only purpose mm -hmm. in life was sarah which really adds to why he's so broken now his one and only mm -hmm. purpose is gone you know right right so it makes sense like obviously like tommy's purpose was joining shit and finding something to do and now it's you know i just thought it was very interesting yeah. mm -hmm. they get to the university bro five days Fireflies are fucking useless. Your princess is in another castle. This is Mar this this whole game. This whole show is just Mario. Okay, they're never gonna find the fireflies. They're all dead. They're useless. I hate them. They should just turn their asses around and just go straight back up to Jackson. And they're like, okay, they'll be back. Like they left for the winter. Fine. Wait till spring. Okay. Check it again. See if they come they're back. They're like but bears chasing after the fireflies. It, when the fireflies say that they will meet you at a place, they are never gonna fucking be there i hate them they suck <laughs> he said i hate them yeah, yeah. i mean I'm, it's just so to frustrating to be like okay they're gonna meet somebody and then they're not there again like <laughs> god they're useless they're useless <laughs> i love this this is so good uh <laughs> yeah they're not there but i will shout out i can't believe they did the monkey thing brian i was interested in whether or not they're gonna do that because that that is straight from the game, Devin, where, yeah, you see monkeys outside, and then you see monkeys again inside. I couldn't believe it. I was like, they spent CG budget on fucking monkeys, dude. That's that's mm -hmm. hilarious. <laughs> what the hell? Pretty cool. Yeah, and then, obviously, they learned, too, that fireflies are most likely going to Salt Lake City. That's where all the Ugh, map they're not, the Very no. convenient map nope. points. <laughs> nope. They're not there. They're not there. <laughs> that's really funny, because you're right, Devin. I mean, what have we seen? Maybe two fireflies uh, this entire show? <laughs> yeah. 
They just made the first rendezvous. Yeah. They were not, I guess, I mean, they weren't supposed to be in Kansas City, right? But then, yeah, like, I don't know. They're just useless. So Tommy not wasn't with them. City. Yeah. I'm ready for them not to be in Salt Lake City. And I, like, if they are, I'll be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where the part, to me, I mentioned earlier, felt a bit rushed. Um, obviously, in the, video, in the video game, there's sequences of gameplay you need. And so this whole university section is, uh, mostly exploring, but then at one point those hunters do show up, and you have to basically just kind of shoot your way out. And uh, in this, it was a little too quick for me personally, in the sense mm-hmm. that Joel fights one guy. <laughs> <laughs> it felt too random, like it just it didn't it didn't like after we spent so much time in Jackson and stuff like that. Maybe if they had like more conversation added to this part where they were doing more stuff before this happened, but it was kind of right. like okay, Jackson's over. Here we are. We're in the school. Uh, shit, we're gonna get hit. This is the plot device for us to move forward. The plot that that was five minutes, literally, At, to, to the point yeah. that I was like, I kept saying, I was like, are they gonna do this part? And the person I was watching was like, what part? And I was like, no, I, they're not doing this part. This, there's no way. And then I looked <laughs> to see, and there was like ten minutes left. I was like, okay, there's no way yes. they're doing this part. And then they did the part, and I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, they're gonna do this whole section in ten minutes. Yeah, this is how this man ends up in getting there. injured is from this. Uh, I didn't like that. I didn't I didn't like how he got injured. I didn't like the way I didn't like that. I didn't mind how he got injured in the sense that uh we won't spoil the, that part for Devin. It's a kind of a bigger part and different a little bit Devin, so we'll save that mm-hmm. for you. But um I I didn't, so I'll just say I didn't mind in how he gets injured. Um I just think I thought it'd be a and mostly just because this felt like the most low budget part of the show because it all just took place in one little field mm-hmm. with one tree. Mm-hmm. whereas like all the other sets are magnificent and beautiful even inside the school but then they go back outside and it's just a horse a tree and an empty so, field <laughs> they've kind of done this yeah. a couple of times where i've been a little weird but not necessarily about this the fields or anything like that but there's been a couple of times where it's just been like we're outside and we didn't feel like putting that much outside uh there's a time i think where they're in the bank or something and i thought the bank looked kind of whatever I'm like oh, mm. okay sure like that doesn't feel like it matches the context of the rest of the show but I can get past it. But yeah, like you said, that one almost felt like they forgot the budget. Um, like they, yeah, they came to yeah. work and forgot they didn't build anything. And they're like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it, we'll film it. We'll put a tree right there. We got it. We yeah. got a tree. Uh, yeah. A I, mean, I feel bit. like it's just because it was like maybe the campus was relatively untouched. Because I feel like it would be like that. Like some places would be completely just like. Yeah, you sure. know, absolutely. Sure, sure, maintenance sure. men stopped coming. But yeah, I guess the grass should be a little higher. Yeah. In the field. <laughs> um, I don't like the way that he got hurt because I don't know how if you guys know much about trauma, but if you get stabbed, it's not the same adrenaline response as if you get shot. If you get shot, there is a chance that you probably won't feel it. Getting stabbed takes some some effort. Uh, you got to you got to right. do it. You got to stab somebody. You got to mean it. You, you, you're going to feel that almost immediately because that is blunt force <laughs> trauma that's going through your body. Especially if it's a, a baseball bat. Right. Wouldn't a piece. That, that's <laughs> yeah. a pretty rough so th- thing that's, to have to win. Exactly. That's so much less sharpness than, and it's not at the speed or velocity of a bullet that you are going to feel that immediately. You are not going to be right. like, hey, ha ha, beat this guy. Oh, fuck. Yeah, but he got I mean, me. this is just a common this is a common thing though. It's just one of those story yeah. things that I'm just like, ah, in a show that they understand trigger discipline, but they know not to put their finger on the trigger when they're not shooting, when they're not shooting the booger hook. Um, you would think they would understand how trauma works when you, you stab somebody. I don't know. It's one of those things where yeah. I just feel I hate the way that we've seen so much bad stuff happen in our world, but we can't seem to mimic it on TV correctly. Uh, this is one of those right. situations. And I know it's it feels mm. nitpicky, but I feel like it matters in a show that cares so much about being realistic. Right. No, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That I feel like they almost yeah, they forget about realism when they're trying to make tropey stuff to move the plot forward. And this is one of those situations where I was like, this didn't make sense to me in in a in a in this world. It would have made sense to me if I was watching, I don't know, fucking Quantum Mania. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? like, but in this it didn't make as much sense to me. It didn't feel like that kind of Stab Scott Lang with a, ru- with a rusty baseball bat. My secret weapon. <laughs> a baseball bat. I, I can see it. A splinter. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. So that, no, that, that's that fair. Weird. Yeah, it was very much a trope that you, you've seen that kind of happen a lot. There's just no reason forms. for it to be a shock, I guess. And they, I don't think that shock value that they were trying to go for hit. I think they missed. Hmm. Um, which if they, if they were going to miss, just don't even do it in the first place. There's no reason. The shock value would have been the fact that he got stabbed to begin with. Like, Yeah, I was mostly shocked that it happened so fast because obviously in the game Joel does get injured and I was just like oh shit we are doing this right, right. now yeah. alright mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> that was my shock yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they kicked that one right on in there on the end 
They sure did. And uh, obviously, they, they dip out. Ellie continuing to waste bullets, firing to nowhere. Um, <laughs> Her favorite thing. And, <laughs> and then, uh, although we before we do, hey, Brian, to be fair, Joel does snap a man's neck. Yes. Cold blood. Just, yes, he was tapping that square <laughs> button real hard. <laughs> he ices it. He does it. <laughs> that is straight game right there. It kills one dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, yeah, Joel, obviously losing a shit ton of blood, dies. End of episode. Yep. End of end of the story. <laughs> no more episodes, right? Falls off the horse. I'm sure he won't be back. Ellie's alone. No. What could happen next? Who knows? Uh, I will say though, I thought Bella did a very good job with the scene mm-hmm. um, of her trying, like freaking out, and and most of just because she's just got such a sailor mouth, and I love it. She's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't know where the fuck to go. And then the moment that really got me is her teeny tiny little hand almost like caresses his face. And I was like, oh my God, she's a child. Look how small her hands are. <laughs> Joel, wake up. You can't leave her alone. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And I was so happy because me and Brian speculated. I was hoping that this is how they would end this episode. And they fucking did, they did it. it. I was so mm-hmm. happy. <laughs> I was worried that's how they're going to begin the next episode, which maybe would have hit better. Right. Now I'm starting to wonder, based on the way that they rushed this. I'm like, hmm. Maybe if they give this a little more time to bait, maybe this would have would have hit me different. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Devin, Devin, yeah, I was like Devin obviously doesn't think that uh, Joel is dead, so I think that's an interesting takeaway. Is he? Is he not? I mean, I don't know, man. You gotta watch next week. You've seen what happened to people in this show. Oh my god, because I mean, he looked pretty. He looked pretty dead to me. So I don't know. They're gonna need some kind of like you know, Walking Dead miracle where it's like, oh, there was a trained surgeon nearby. The train just, surgeon happened to be in that. In that train yard. He's just yelling as he's walking around. Hello, it's me, the train surgeon. (laughs) Train surgeon guy. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know, man. So, I mean, it looks pretty dire, but we'll see. If if Joel's actually dead, that would be insane. And they just, like, the next episode. It would be a very Game of Thrones HBO thing to do, though, wouldn't it? It would. (laughs) But then LA's just fucked and the story just ends. Damn. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) The only things I have left to say about this episode was that I'm... Uh, I hope the Jacksons stay safe. I hope all those people don't get attacked in like Walking Dead fashion. I hope that place <laughs> just remains safe and thriving. And I also hope that the horse will be okay. And I'm glad that they did not kill the horse yet. And I really <laughs> hope that they will. Like he said will yet. <laughs> just don't, just leave that horse alone. I was really worried for the horse. Leave like that horse. Raider guys were walking around. So I was like, when they, when they started galloping away on the horse, I was like, all right, thank God the horse made it. Or like, you know, I thought some <laughs> random zombie would come out as they were like, galloping around the or just tr- trotting around the campus so glad they didn't hurt the horse i hope that horse does not die <laughs> we'll see quick little tidbits uh they did do the same depeche mode song in the credits although it was obviously like a scarier haunting version funny enough sung by craig mason's own daughter he had her sing it even though he he was like i understand the nepo thing the nepo baby thing but i i had her do it because you know it was cheaper and easier to do <laughs> <laughs> Last two behind the scenes things. Ashley Johnson, who plays Ellie in the, the game, loves space. And that's the reason why Ellie loves space. So I thought that was super cool. And same reason with Troy Baker, who plays Joel in the game. He loves music and loves to sing. So that's why they put the little tidbit of Joel wanted to be a singer. That's cool. Pretty cool that they, they kept that stuff in there. That's very cool. Um, yeah. That's pretty much all of that. Devin, still liking the show? Oh, yeah. I'm cu- curious to see the, the Ellie backstory episode next. Obviously, the mall you know, debacle. And then, but I mean, I'm really just curious to see in two weeks, like what the hell they're going to do in cold Colorado with Joel, basically a minute away from dying. If he's not already dead. So. <laughs> uh, yes. I am looking forward to seeing uh, how you feel about the next, again, only three more episodes, three more episodes. That's nuts. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah. All right, Devin, we'll check you here next week then, man. All right. Sounds good. Love you guys. Love you, man. Love you, man. See ya. All right, Brian. It's time once again for shh. shh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a clicker. <laughs> shh. Something, usually the shush is louder than actually just being silent. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. This, Shut up. This clicker. <laughs> They're around us everywhere. <laughs> shh. Shut up. There's a cl- clickers afoot. Future spoilers. Um, yes, listeners, this is the future spoiler section. Uh, obviously, we'll continue some video game comparison stuff that we wanted to keep from Devin. Um, and then future spoilers. So 
Last of Us, Last of Us Part Two, any of that stuff is on the table, left behind. Um, we will try to keep if if there's some people who haven't played two for some reason, because I know there there might be some. There might be only people that played the first one. Mm. We'll try to keep the Last of Us Part Two stuff in one condensed thing so you can check the time codes and avoid that or whatever. With that, Brian, let's do that Last of Us Part Two stuff. Real quick, <laughs> let's just do it. Right there's now. a lot. Yeah. Let's just do it now and we'll get it over, out of the way. There's a lot of Last of Us Part Two stuff foreshadowed in this episode that we could not talk about. Je- basically, just Jackson. <laughs> All of Jackson. That that looks straight from the fucking game, they, they dude. They stole that from the game down to like the dinner hall with the lights in there. Uh, that yeah. is straight from the very first scene that you see in The Last of Us 2. <laughs> it looked incredible, dude. Like yeah. they, oh, it looked like a livable town. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that and, yeah, that's Dina, right? It's gotta be. Like that's a, that's a million percent. It's Dina. really funny that they didn't. It's interesting they put in Easter eggs like that. I didn't think they were going to do anything like that because why would they? Why would they need to? They really didn't. I mean, I guess in the sense that they can now. Yeah. Like, obviously, the first one didn't know what a part two would look like, so they right. couldn't. But now they have that past knowledge that, yeah, we can chuck some of this shit in there. Because before I even made the connection, I don't think I made a connection. So I don't even remember how I made the connection. But when, as soon as she gave the note and was like, hey, blah, 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 or like she, she like looked at her weird. I was like, oh. And I said, oh, she's trying to fuck. And I was just making a joke. <laughs> I, I, I didn't really think much of it. And then I thought about it. And I was like, wait, they are in the area that they would be in Last of Us 2. So that was interesting. Absolutely. Dude. Yeah. So I, my, my biggest question was like, are they going to recast? Or have they thought that far ahead that that is the girl that is going to play Dean? I hope it is. But I would not be surprised if they recast. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised either, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. I think that'd be very cool. I know Kevin Feige's done a lot for a lot of people to make people want to think that far ahead, but I don't know if they actually have done that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Ant Man's daughter is now this new person uh, kind of sure. shit. <laughs> uh, between that, but like the little things, like speaking of of name dropping, they name drop Shimmer the Horse, mm-hmm. which players will know doesn't meet a very good fate. <laughs> 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 That horse gets fucking obliterated in part two. That is Ellie's horse that her and Dina ride on. But I was like, little shit, like, no one's going to remember that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. I, that. That's the kind of care that I feel like they're putting in this show. That I, I mean, having a creator of the game in there really helps for. Absolutely. I'm really sad at what the hell is going to happen to Tommy in the future. Oh. <laughs> like, I was just thinking about that this whole episode. I was like, God, he's so good. And, like, he's always trying to do, and, like, just... Knowing what happens to him in part two is just so sad. I was working so hard <laughs> to beat that man's ass though. I can't <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, oh, it's going to be a bummer. Especially now with the knowledge that he's going to be a dad. Like, that's going to make it even worse, <laughs> dude. <laughs> like, I'm not looking forward I'll to it. I'll be very curious to see how a show based on the, the second game is going to feel to people. Because if you yeah. think this is a feel bad, <laughs> Devin's going to be distraught. From the second game. I do have a theory, or yeah, so I guess a theory. I kind of hope they stick everything with the game worth, which seems like they will, especially with the beginning of part two, just so I can see the the reactions of normal non gamer people to the to this show. Hits them the so same. I could be like, yeah, <laughs> so I'd be like, oh, this is what a normal person's reaction would be to this event. The, the leaks <laughs> didn't help too. There was a whole leak issue as well. When yeah, they saw the first thing out of context, and that made a whole big issue. So. I don't yeah. know. I really, as someone that loves The Last of Us, one of my favorite games of all time, I, I don't understand the the disjointed issue with that part because that has happened in so many different franchises where exactly that has happened right. that I just don't. It's just people being mad about their superhero dad. Ex- <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I just don't. I don't fucking get it. I don't know. I'm sorry that you you're sad. Yeah, life goes on. I love how the 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 old couple from the beginning is basically living the life that Ellie and Dina will soon oh, live yeah. at some point in Last of Us Part <laughs> Two, just secluded by themselves. <laughs> As God intended. Yeah. Also, Last of Us Two stuff. I again, this is from the first game. They talk about Ellie loves space, but obviously, there's that beautiful space moment in Part Two, which is probably one of the highlights of that game. That flashback. For sure. Uh, I just thought that was cool. Yeah. I think that's all the Last of Us Two E stuff. I thought it was very interesting that. Again, this is this is a big theme that I had to save until here, where this, especially in this episode, they're showing that Joel's kind of just a really selfish dude for his own reasons, though, in the sense that he tells Tommy, it's the last thing I'll ever ask you, I swear, which those two words are going to be pretty critical at the end of this <laughs> fucking show. <laughs> yeah, so he's selfish in that moment where he wants Tommy to take Ellie because he can't do it. And then I 100% 
think it's a false choice with that he gives Ellie in this episode of who do you want to go with? Right. He knows she's going to pick him. Right. He's only doing that so the like make it seem like he's giving her a choice when in reality he wants her to pick him because he needs her to pick him for himself. Right. Again, it's in a in a way it's more selfish than selfless, you know. Right. He he wants to just be the protector. He wants to feel like he 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 set with the fact that he's felt like he's always a failure so that he came back to be like this is my one chance to not be a failure. This is for him to to finally prove himself as a good father in this situation. Um yeah. How'd you feel about them? I know it was a video gamey thing, but they didn't do any horse chase. We, Ellie didn't run away. Oh, she didn't run away. Didn't run yeah, away. I was mostly okay with it in the sense that I, I don't know. I just don't. I didn't see Bella Ramsey's Ellie doing that as much in this in this world, especially because again, like we said, this isn't taking place in the dam, and it's a bigger sprawling place. We don't even know if Ellie has seen the stables or knows where they are mm-hmm. or anything like that. So, I I think it was okay with it. Um, b- overall, uh, yeah. That's so. Fair. Uh, but it, it's just different context and like with everything, especially with like Tommy's decisions to decide to take Ellie. Um, whereas in this show, it's all because he has Joel has that emotional breakdown is when he decides to do it. Whereas in the game, Tommy sees Joel and Ellie after the big ambush, they go save each other. And Ellie's like acting like a child to him. She's like telling him all these things. And Joel's like worried about her. And Tommy can see that. Fuck, this is another Sarah. I know why he wants me to do this because mm. he's he can't do it. And that's what changes Tommy's and mind. Yeah, that kind of that hits for me differently. And I feel like that's where's another place where I kind of felt maybe it's a little rushed. Cause I think it forced that conversation mm. a little bit quicker for him of her already knowing that like he wanted to get rid of her and then they talking about it pretty quickly and resolving that pretty quickly, as opposed to him right. not knowing, like, why the fuck did she leave? Like, why why are you running away like this? And then, you know, all that kind of yeah boiling down to, oh, okay, I get it now. Like we're we're having an issue. Uh, I mean, yeah, I agree. I also thought it might have been a bit, maybe a bit rushed, especially when basically Joel tells her we're le- we're separate, we're going our separate ways, and then he has a couple flashbacks of Sarah, and then the next morning he's like, "All right, let's go." <laughs> you know, it's 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 just that. Yeah, I- I've been here <laughs> hanging out with this this horse. Would you would you like to go with me? Okay, whatever. Right. Yeah. So I definitely agree with you on that a bit. All right, uh, and then uh, yeah, we kind of talked about all the big video game comparison stuff. Obviously, all this stuff takes place in the dam. But the probably the the biggest difference besides that, Joel does not get impaled on a rebar. <laughs> we talked about this before recorded. I understand why they didn't do it because if you watch it in the game, and if you were to put that context with these characters, I think it would be a hard place for people to believe that Joel is still alive. That, that, <laughs> that Joel bad knees can survive something. <laughs> that that detrimental and uh traumatizing so to your old. to your body <laughs> uh, but i still think they could have been another way to do it because i mean he still gets a certain impalement it's not nearly as deep and it's not both ends of his body right <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's kind of like i that's why i asked Devin. i was like how did that sit for you because Devin was like oh yeah so he's totally dead or whatever he obviously knows he's not i feel like a pretty mm. big i mean you you and they're probably going to add to it with some of the more stuff that's going to happen towards the the second part of this um, and hopefully that part hits better for me. But it's one of those things where it's like you in the game, at least I didn't really feel like like I thought about it. But in a space where Game of Thrones was on for three years at this point, right. I wasn't sure if he was going to survive this. And I thought this was going to end up turning into a game about a solo character at this point. Um, this didn't hit that the same way. And I know, of course, I know the story. So, of course, I would know that as well. But at the same time, just like based on the injury and how quickly they hit through it and went through him getting bad it was just like i don't i wouldn't have, i wouldn't think this man was in really any real danger i i don't know i also think they have a chance because based on this ending which i love i hope there's two versions that can do this i hope next week is nothing modern i hope it's just, just left, left behind, behind yeah. and it leaves people still wondering for another week uh-huh. if joel is alive that's fair so I think it can still work because in the game, obviously, we think that because the next thing that happens is we're playing as Ellie. Right. We're like, what the fuck? There's no Joel. We're playing as Ellie hunting with a bow and that's it. And it's only for like another hour and a half later that you finally see Joel, who's in terrible shape in a garage, just <laughs> barely clinging to life. And that's I, I do agree with you. I think that's exactly why they put Left of Behind where they did. And I know we've been talking about that for weeks now about where would they put that yeah. for it to make sense. And this felt the most appropriate. But I just I don't know. Mm. I still feel like I need more. I don't know what would be more. But I just him, right. it was just so quick. It was like, I feel like it was almost 30 seconds between him getting stabbed and him falling off that horse. And then it just cut it's to black. Very quick. And I was just like, huh? 
yeah. all because they took a random yeah. side tour and tried to find East Colorado University and then didn't. And then <laughs> one motherfucker hits him. I don't know. It yeah. just didn't feel as it was one of one of those things that just didn't immerse me as much as everything else has in this show. That it's kind of like Ugh. you're just trying to yeah. you're just trying to move the plot. I get you. I understand. Yeah. Again, that's yeah. That's why I say it, it, that that scene could have been four minutes longer with them struggling to escape, maybe or something like right. Sure, get him, just get him shot. Better. If you want him to have real trauma that he can survive from, you can survive a gunshot. But like, get him right. shot. He's been shot at a lot. Yeah. It would make sense. But a fucking splintered right. bat. And then he didn't even notice. Doesn't feel right to me. Yeah, it doesn't hit the same to me. I don't know. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I guess if it's a bullet, it's harder to show how bad it is because then the gut there's not as gushy when he pulls it out of him. But that's the thing too. Is it's like if you wanted something that would be shocking, like adrenaline will take over. You get shot by a gun. There's been people, plenty of people right. that have ran distances before they've realized they've been shot. Um, then you would have mm-hmm. been like, oh shit, you've been hit. You know, the same way that Tess was bitten, no one knew for a long. Like, those kind of things are like, if you want right. to hit the trope, hit the trope correctly. And I don't feel like that was correctly hitting the trope. You know when you've been stabbed. Like, I promise. Like, <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't, I, <laughs> it's just, it's one of those things. So it's, it's fine. I, I'm not uh, yeah. the maddest I can be about it. But it's just like, I don't know, man. Because that's such a pinnacle part of the story that I was like, mm-hmm. I needed to hit. I need to hit. Like, Henry hit. Yeah. The Henry stuff hit. The Bill stuff hit. Right. I need to hit. I think it, it, I'm glad to know that it hit for people that don't know what actually happens in the Fair. game, like Devin. I th- I'm glad it, it hit for them, but I, I agree with yeah, you. But yeah. I, the person I was watching with, I don't think it hit for them as much. And I think Devin even, like, he, oh, I yeah? don't think, when he's complaining a little bit more, he's like, well, I truly don't know whether or not, because we kind of, we baited him a little bit and said, thank you, right. maybe he's not alive. But he started with sarcasm, being like, oh, yeah, he's so dead. And it's like, when I was playing this game, I didn't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't know if this man was yeah. going to make it. Uh, so maybe, like you said, maybe they have this opportunity with this next episode to really pin it in that, like, we're going back to Ellie's story because Ellie is now the only character in this story. Yeah, that's fair. We'll see. That's fair. We'll see. No naming of the horse, Callus. I wonder if that'll come up, but I also love how Devin's like, I hope nothing happens to that horse. That horse is going to get its head blown off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You think they're going to show it? Sorry, Devin. Uh, I think they'll show the horse get shot, maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, they haven't uh, been super gruesome thus far. Outside of Perry's yeah. probably been the worst thing I can think of. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that even that was out of focus. Right. So, but yeah, I mean, I get. It. I mean, again, like we talked about, all the stuff that they've cut is Joel falling from great heights. <laughs> they cut him the falling down the elevator shaft. They cut him falling off something else. I don't remember. And then this yeah. falling from like a second story, getting impaled. This yeah. they, they they cut off me dying fifteen times to the clicker. Yeah, <laughs> they did a lot of that. It was kind of pissed me off because I need that for my own immersion. But yeah, I get it. The, the, the falling thing, they. But I just feel like there's so many other ways you can show violence without having this man, you know, survive Herculean feats. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Unless you have anything else, Brian. No, that's basically all I got right now. Three episodes left, and it looks like we know what's going. Got some left behind. We got. Good old David coming up. I'm excited to see how that pans out. And then uh, ending. Ugh. All right, listeners. That's it for us. You can email us at thefortresslab at gmail.com. Fortress about F-O-U-R. Feel free to email us any questions, feedback, recommendations, or anything like that. Also, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and the YouTube channel at the Fortress of. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your grandma, tell your cat. Rate and review us, preferably five stars, whatever you like. Thank you, Jackie, for helping edit the podcast every week. Thank you, Brian, for the art. Alex, for the music. And Devin, thank you for being here, even when you're not here. You can find Brian on Instagram at ITZ underscore, by the way, Alex at Peterson Films. Devin, you can find him holding on to hope that that horse will survive <laughs> the end of this show. Oh, there's no hope. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, could, I didn't remember to think of a sign-off for us, Brian, this week. <laughs> Nothing popped out to me in this episode that I thought of. I was going to say we should say we murdered people, but we probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. I can't think of anything like that was super funny. It was a lot of sad. Yeah, it was really sad. So I guess we'll just say, hey, Brian, look. Damn. Boo, <laughs> tomato, tomato, tomato. It was either that or bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I'll take that one over there. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week for H was Last of Us.